Uh, Ricky's out in the sticks in the Eastern Cape um, uh, PE. He's one of our favourite liars in the whole world. Those of you who've watched the show before know Ricky Stone. He's We met him as an environmental liar and he helped us put a stop to all the spraying with a shot over the bow to the government and the cops and everything. So welcome to the show again tonight, Ricky. We're, we're, you're on now because... Um, we just wanted to know how your day is, and uh, you're a drinker and a smoker, and how does it sound for 21 days, Brew? Oh, pretty crazy, eh, Jules? I mean, the day, so I guess I'm fortunate, as people are saying, I'm a lot calmer than they would have expected, and that's probably because I'm 100 metres from the ocean, um, Jeffrey's Bayway, and this is where I'm locked down. But you know, I I mean, the alcohol thing, fortunately, I've been uh, limiting myself to just the weekend, so I think I'll be fine through this. Um, I've definitely got enough other wellness and health products to see me through, I think, too. <laughs> but I mean, even just the thought, you know, of having to, uh, I guess, self-define what panic buying is. Um, I smoke cigarettes, and that was quite a thing. So in Jeffrey's Bay today... When I went to the pick and pay, there wasn't a single box of cigarettes at quarter to ten this morning. <laughs> so I went to eight, eight, on my eighth shop, and I still couldn't get Marlboro Lights, which was just smoke. I managed to get two cartons of Marlboro Red. No writing tobacco either. That's so it was quite a nerve-wracking day, eh? Huh? For me, just, I guess, personally trying to ready myself for this. Um, but then also fielding heaps and heaps of calls from... Uh, many human beings are affected by this, whether it's lease agreements, uh, financing agreements with banks, and then businesses, uh, a large part of those also who fall within the essential services definition, you know, and who are now or actually mandated by law to trade. So yeah, one heck of a day, Jules. It's not done yet either. No, I will to be on the show. Well, we... Uh, we waited and wait. we really wanted you on. We knew it was going to be tight and we kept you on... Get, got you on at the last minute. Um, there's, there's all sorts of confusion about the rules and the regulations. And the, what, what are your personal feelings about sending in the army? Have you got the army in J Bay? Have you got a presence there at all? Look, not not yet. Hey, uh, well, I haven't personally seen any army vehicles. But I mean, just to go to the shops today and back took me close to two and a half hours, and that's probably within like a 10 kilometer radius, if that. So I didn't venture off too many roads. Um, so I wouldn't have seen army, but there were certainly police and law enforcement officials out. So I have been seen on some community groups, a lot of uh, justices of oaths and uh, peace officers have put themselves forward to assist with the enforcement. So it's not just going to be the army, the police, there's, there's many other people, you know, who in terms of the law would be called upon in a crisis such as this. Indeed. And what's your main, and, and, and you will be re working really, really hard remotely, like many of us, yeah? You, you, you imagine, apart from the psychology of it all, the, just the day-to-day -day runnings of your multifaceted life goes on on, uh, on on a channel like this. You zoom in, you, you, you're online mostly, yeah? Oh, yes, yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah. Lots of Google Hangout meetings. Um, and then telephone calls, emails. I guess, well, one thing it has shown me is how unimportant many meetings we have face to face, you know, when it can now be done via an email, because organizing 10 people to get around the hangout is not that easy. And, uh, um, so I get there are many parts of the lessons out of this for, for corporations, to the business of fortune that I'm not to work at home, but. Um, some of the groups I'm involved in because they're no longer, um, unfortunately, won't be paid, you know, for at least the next 21 days. But to give you an example, some retail uh, landlords have sent emails saying that they're going to freeze all rental payments, including interest and everything, for three months. Um, it's quite a significant number there, too. That is a very significant number. Um, that, that's quite incredible. It'll bound, it, 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 three months is. As Mark was saying, three months might be just the tip of the iceberg, but it's a really good thought. I mean, the world is changing very, very rapidly to accommodate all of this. It's quite extraordinary. It, when I Last week I got picked up, Ricky, by saying either it was a state of, emer a state of disaster or a state of emergency. I think last week I said this state of emergency. Can you, 
was I right or was I wrong? What 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 sort of state are we in in the law at the moment? Yeah, look, it, it actually raises so many fascinating legal questions. This whole um, virus, you know, and any steps that have been taken thus far. I mean, we have to also bear in mind that this is unprecedented. We've never been faced with a crisis such as this. Any governments that, that have been around for, say, the last 600 years, you know. So uh, there's bound to be certain mistakes, particularly with regard to regulation. Some things might be left out. And I'll get on to it a little bit later, but how fluid it is. And during the day, all of a sudden, government realized they've made a mistake in the form and it actually needed this detail, and then they have to amend it. So it's always in this constant state of flux. But um, two Sundays ago, they when President Ramaphosa um, made his declaration to the nation. That then was, in terms of the Disaster Management Act, uh, declaration of a, nation, a national state of disaster, okay, which then is distinguishable from a national state of emergency. So the distinction is also very important. And I guess... Again, we're blessed to have the Constitution, um, which we do have, and which you and I both are very fond of. So, very fond. Fortunately, some other jurisdictions don't have like a kind of in between a disaster state. They go straight to state of emergency. And why I say that? Because it's particularly relevant. Because in a state of emergency, basically almost all of your human rights that you have in terms of the Bill of Rights can be suspended. So a state of emergency is the absolutely extreme and extraordinary remedy that a state would have to go to to um, somewhat bring a threat uh, under control. So, I mean, effectively then, so in a state of emergency, government can even discriminate. So there's certain, in terms of the Constitution, there's eight grounds, I think, that you can not entitled to discriminate on, but in the, when it comes to a state of emergency, not all of those grounds become non-discriminatory. So for example, had government declared a state of emergency, which they might still well do, um, there is a, a question as, a, as to whether that would be permitted in terms of our Constitution. I'll touch on that. Um, but then, if it was a state of emergency, they could discriminate on the basis of gender, sexual orientation, HIV status, or nationality. So that would be permitted um, because a state of emergency, those rights would be suspended because it's strictly required by the emergency. So, for example, where your doctors um, in Italy have had to decide whether certain patients be like over a certain age or sex or... Um, health condition, you know, whether they would save them. That, that is what would happen if it was a state of emergency. So I think fortunately for us, we're not yet there. I would really hope that we do not get there, because once that happens, uh, many rights will be suspended, such as the rights to freedom of expression, the right to vote even, the right to education, the right to dignity. You basically just hang on to your right to life. But then even then you could be discriminated against on one of the places I mentioned. So it is very serious. And as an attorney, look, it's quite a gloomy time, but I've seen what the wartime doctors look like. And I can tell you I feel like a wartime attorney, man. <laughs> well, um, so I was absolutely right to be picked up in the um, comments about it later. I do apologize. So this... This all of a sudden, I feel quite lucky that we're in just a state of disaster. All of a sudden, it's um, I don't think it's, I don't think there is a state of emergency, and I, I don't know how we we heard from Bill that there's um, you know that there is a military presence around, but um, they they kind of are our best friends in America. They the military, there's no threat of any sort of weird insurgency from them. I reckon I don't know, I don't know how to, nobody knows what the army's like in this generation's in South Africa. So it's quite a tough one. <laughs>